Hey everybody, today we're going to do a tutorial on how to make a cardboard box, Amazon style, with Fusion Sheet Metal tools. Let me take a moment to show you exactly how it looks like on the timeline, and then we'll dive into actually building it from scratch. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let's get down to it. The first step that we're going to want to do is, let me hide this body, uh, is to create a new component. And we want to make sure that, that that component is a sheet metal component. And uh, even though I've already made the rule set for cardboard here, I'm going to show you how to make a custom rule set also. So we'll leave this at, at the default. We'll say OK. And before we draw anything, we're going to want to go into my sheet metal rules. And uh, I'm going to actually say new rule. And this is what we're going to do. I'm going to say cardboard with an exclamation point so you know that it's different and I don't get lost here. And I'm going to make the thickness 3 millimeter. K factor is how much metal stretches um, during a bend, and it's a factor of its thickness. Now, cardboard doesn't really bend in more like crushes so we're going to leave that at zero to really get what we're looking for uh, we're going to go into bend conditions and instead of making the bend radius the thickness of the material once again because it crushes i'm just going to make it point to zero to zero uh, we're going to go into corner conditions and there's both a two bend intersection and a three bend intersection and we're going to change this to square and then for three bend intersection we're going to change this to intersection and hit save. We're going to hit close and what we want to do is make sure that it's using the correct sheet metal rule that we just made. So we're going to say switch rule. We're going to grab cardboard and uh, start from there. And now that we're ready to go with that, we're going to start a new sketch. And I'm going to sketch on the right plane. And I'm going to do a uh, center point rectangle and start right on my origin. And I'm going to make it 3.0 by 8.0, just because this happens to be an Amazon box that I had on my kitchen table when I originally did this tutorial. Um, we're going to hit enter and finish our sketch. And we're going to uh, right click on our part here. And uh, we have an option for flange uh, because it knows that it's a sheet metal tool. But uh, we're going to go right up here and click the flange tool. And um, I already have the appearance set. So I was going to show you something later on. But I actually have another video set for how to do appearances. So we'll leave that in the other video. Um, so we have our flange. Notice our, fl our thickness. We didn't have any options to set our thickness. Uh, that's because the thickness is actually dedicated or dictated by the rule that we had set here. Um, we're going to use the flange tool uh, a copious amount and we're going to continue on. So a faster way to do it is to right click and either say flange here or repeat flange. Whichever one is on top is the last uh, uh, type of feature that we have used. So both ways are pretty quick. Um, we're going to click over here. And we're going to say uh, our height datum is uh, an outside face. And we're going to do an inside bend for this one. And I'm going to pull this along to be 12.0 and hit Enter. Now we're going to right click and go into flange again. And I'm going to just uh, grab this tool here, uh, our corner here, and pull it out 8.0 to match the front, um, leaving these the same. Uh, doing it again, I can just right click and actually just drag that direction uh, so I don't even need to click more than once. And I'm going to pull it down here and this is what I want you to see. If I were to pull it all 12 inches, um, it's actually going to give us an error that just popped up right there in the corner because it's trying to fuse this together. So we need to change the bend position from inside to adjacent and it's going to move it next to and actually leave a little gap right here. Uh, after we say OK on that one, we should be able to click on this corner and say flange again. And we're going to pull it this way and notice that we have an error right away. We're going to actually say inside and move this out uh, 1.5 and say OK. And notice we have a really nice 
tight uh, tight gap here. Now, if you uh, if you don't like, well, let's just hit the home button. Uh, if you don't like how this looks, we can always go back into this particular feature, and we can back this off just the littlest bit, um, and say OK. And it's going to rebuild that feature after a moment, or stall a little bit. Let's wait for it. Hopefully, it doesn't crash. There we go. And you can see that uh, it seems to be lined up a little bit better, and I like how that looks. So I just brought that back 50 thousandths, and we're going to uh, work from there. It's going to be great. Um, the next things we want to do is, yep, you guessed it, continue using the flange tool. And we can make the flanges for both our top here. So we can pull these in uh, about four inches. And we can change our angle and we can actually move it. Uh, and it seems to have a hard time here. So I'm actually just going to punch it in. Uh, I'm going to say 10 degrees. So it's almost all the way open. Um, if I wanted to open it more, I'd have to go to a negative number to go past this. Um, so we are notice that this is an inside bend here. Uh, height datum from the outer faces. Uh, when we click on these side ones and go into the flange tool again, we want this one to be an outside and that way when we go ahead and pull this we actually don't have interference with things hitting each other. It's giving me a warning right now but I'm going to go ahead and just open it up like this so it looks like an open box and when we do the bottom you'll see what I mean. So we're going to go ahead and do the bottom now. Uh, flange tool again and click on the two bottom faces and we're going to pull those in four inches and uh, make this an inside. See how that uh, actually pulled right to the bottom of the box by making it an inside? So we're going to go ahead and do an inside for that one and then uh, one last time and I'm having a hard time reaching right through this so I'm just going to uh, pivot around and select both of those. Well, I guess I need to select both of them, huh? So there we go, and we'll pull this in, and uh, there's that warning again, trying to fuse it together, and that's not what we want, so we're going to switch that to outside, so it's on a separate, uh, it'll bend actually and be on the underside, and we want to uh, not quite close the box, and uh, so I'm just going to go ahead, um, I can pull it four inches, and the gap here um, is about the thickness of the material itself, so I'm, I'm fine with that. I think most Amazon boxes are not completely tight anyways. So we're just going to go with what we have here. Um, now what did I do to um, what did I do to uh, put this texture on here? Uh, I went into bodies and I right clicked and went into appearances and I actually made a custom cardboard texture by duplicating. I'll just show you again. Uh, we're going to duplicate uh, the one that's already there. Go in, uh, say edit, and if we were to call this um, cardboard example, typing is hard today. Uh, and then go into advanced right here at this drop down. We have an option to change this from RGB to a particular uh, image itself. I grabbed this tiled texture off of freepick.com and uh, we can just say apply and OK. And then that is that cardboard image. Notice the size of the corrugation changed. If I wanted to edit here, I can actually change the size by moving this down. So if I change the scaling just a little bit, it is tiled um, and uh, it can be better or worse, but I think that looks about good for what we're doing. I can also change the rotation, but the Amazon box that was on my desk uh, did have um, the corrugated material go this way. So we'll just go ahead and do that. The next things I wanted to show you is uh, adding a decal to our side here. So I'm just going to click on the side. And I'm going to say insert decal. And um, the decal I want to pick is in the class share. So you'll find it in the uh, Amazon box demo uh, folder in the class share. And I'm going to grab the Amazon monogram. This is a PNG file with uh, a transparent background. So you got to be aware of what kind of uh, background you put on there. 
and I'm just going to move it there. It can be scaled in size, but I like the size that I have. Um, if I were to look right on this, I just want to see it uh, kind of lined up the best as I can. I'm just going to let it go from, from there and flip this back around. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and I'll add one to this side also. Uh, so we will click here and uh, insert a decal again and we'll grab that same decal from the class share um, the monogram and move that over and up a little bit maybe free arrange it here good and that's good to go if I want that decal to for some reason to be on another section um, it's pretty easy for me to just click on the decals area over here I'm gonna to have to wait for fusion um, and I can right click and I can edit and then I can change my face at any time I want to and, and do really anything I want with that decal so it, it makes it nice to uh, play with um, so how about I just pick a side and we'll add a couple more decals to make this look a little bit more realistic uh, I will insert from my computer and I'll actually grab the whole Amazon logo uh, and maybe I will uh, scale this up a little bit and just kind of put this right there say okay um, and if I go back to home I'm gonna uh, right here I'm gonna put on one more decal uh, so you definitely see that it's this way uh, here's another one that's a material handling uh, symbol for this way up um, and uh, it's just a little bit big so I'm just gonna scale this down to a height that seems to work and I'm actually going to shrink it narrower because they're actually a different size than a standard size that you'd find. So uh, there we go. The last thing we want to put on here is uh, the detail that's normally on the Amazon flap. Putting that detail on here, uh, what I had to do was actually click and do a new sketch on that plane and then I was going to insert a text and what I found out is when I click to insert a text um, I would just type in uh, what the box says. So that's 1AD, uh, not exclamation point, but 1AD. Uh, make the height 2 inches and uh, change this to Arial Narrow and then just kind of uh, move it where I want it. So we'll say OK and then we'll move it to where I want it. And uh, after finishing the sketch, um, in order for me to change make the sketch actually visible I did need to press pull and I'm going to pull it out just 0.001 one thousandth of an inch and that's going to join to the original body so um, now I have that and it's actually visible and if I carefully select inside here I can change the appearance of just that and I went into paint and glossy and did glossy enamel black and just uh, clicked right there. And uh, sometimes that can give you trouble, but there we go. Here's our box. Now, here's a couple things that are fun before we wrap up here. Okay, so I uh, had to change a couple of things. I want to show you what I had to do. This last flange that I had to do, I went in and edited and I needed to make this one, uh, it was set at outside and it needs to actually be set at adjacent. And then when it does that, adjacent is telling these two parts that they don't touch, even if it looks like it does. So uh, I had to make that little edit and now I wanted to show you that fun thing that I was leading up to before uh, truncating this video. So if we were to click on the face that we originally started with we can go into modify and we can actually say unfold and uh, it won't unfold the uh, the um, the decals that we put on here but it will unfold the rest and here's actually the box and uh, what it looks like uh, at the moment so it looks like I should probably change the height of these boxes because it should be four inches like the others um, so if we were to say just cancel on that and go back in and change that that's pretty cool when we unfold something we can actually um, we can actually do more modifications and more features on here like holes and uh, chamfers and uh, fillets and things like that that might end up in an actual sheet metal part or in a different type of cardboard box uh, and this just makes it a whole lot easier to take care of. 
Um, let's not confuse unfold with one of the coolest features that sheet metal tools can do here, and that is to create a flat pattern. So if we were to select that same stationary face and create a flat pattern, uh, it's actually gonna make us a new component and we're inside that component at the moment. And here's the flat pattern for it. If we do any sort of uh, features or sketches or design changes on here, when we exit the flat pattern, although they're on here, they won't show up on the actual 3D part. But uh, we have a great option to export our flat pattern as a DXF file, and that's great to send to, our, uh, to routers, to lasers, and to our uh, plasma cutter. So really good stuff here. Uh, if you're going to cut it on the plasma cutter, it does show the bend lines. If we had a larger um, K factor, it actually shows a separate line from where the bend is and where the bend allowance is. Um, uh, but really cool stuff here. Super fun. When we're done with the flat pattern, uh, we can just change this. And then if we were to, say, change this feature right here um, actually to four inches like I originally wanted it and say OK, um, our flat pattern just needs to be uh, updated again, and then we can activate our flat pattern and it'll go right back to uh, what we had planned here. So I'm going to exit out of the flat pattern and uh, end the video with that. So thank you very much for watching.